and define the appeal of a tropical vacation. But no cruise ship created quite as much stir down at the dock as did the arrival of the TMT San Juan. The huge freighter carried in its hold a precious cargo, brought here but once each year at the beginning of the tourist season. The locals knew all about that cargo and couldn't wait to get a glimpse of the exotic sports cars imported for Nassau Speed Weeks and its premier event, the Nassau Trophy Race. Speed Weeks was tourist promotion, pure and simple. The objective was to get folks to the islands and get them spending money. If racing Exotica could accomplish that, then let's have a race. But that motive in no way detracted from the difficulty of the course or the quality of the competition. Let's go out to the circuit where pit reporter John Traviesco talked with one of the pre-race favorites. Well, I think I've got some real tough competition this year from Dan Gurney and Walt Hanskin, Bruce McLaren. I think it's going to be a terrific race. As you know, Nassau is a course that it really takes toll on the automobiles. And I think it, uh, it might, someone might surprise us today and win it that we never even heard of because of the mortality rate of the automobiles. I think Jim has done a great job on the chaparrales, and we feel very confident they will last. And I think if they do, we should be up there. You've already had a bit of trouble. Didn't you uh, break something and lose a wheel? Well, actually, uh, I had I hit one of the small stones out on the course and it popped the lower ball joint out of the suspension but this was fixed very easily among those hoping to challenge roger penske in the chaparral was american racing legend a.j foyt who'd been up all night working on his hussein one a.j was racing for john meekham who brought five cars here before the end of practice he was down to two back then a.j was among a handful of drivers well known to the average american sports fan then, as now, the three major networks devoted most of their coverage to the stick and ball sports and only occasionally found their way to the racetracks. NBC's Jim Simpson drew the assignment of trying to make some sense out of the Nassau Trophy race. This race begins with the Le Mans start. It's tricky and the drivers practice to get it down pat. Now, this is the way it works. The cars are lined up on one side of the road, the drivers are on the other. At the signal, the drivers sprint to the cars, leap in, buckle their seat belts, start the car, and away they go. You'd be surprised how quickly they can get underway, especially when you consider most of them are wearing their shoulder-type safety belts. And because of that, for this race only, the officials are permitting one member of the pit crew to help strap the driver into the car. Well, it is beginning to rain. One huge black cloud has moved from the ocean over the course. That's a shame. It wasn't supposed to rain. A lot of the drivers probably have not had a chance to change to rain tires, and we could have some wicked driving conditions. It could mean there'll be a lot of slipping and sliding, and it could mean also that the more powerful cars, like Fort Hussein, McLaren's Olds, and the Chaparrales, well, their conditions won't be exactly right. There's number 10, the car of Pedro Rodriguez, who is driving a four-liter Ferrari. The Ferraris, by the way, the Porsches, and some of the lighter, less powerful cars can really go in the rain. Just a few seconds now to the start, the drivers are in position. It is still raining. Not a heavy rain, but enough to put a glaze, a slippery glaze of water on the track. There's the flag. The Nassau Trophy race is underway. for the lead with Skip Hudson and the number 94 Cooper Chevy. Pedro Rodriguez in the four-liter Ferrari number 10 is running third. Number 92 Bob Johnson in the Cobra's fourth, A.J. Ford fifth, and then Penske. It's raining. It is slippery, but so far no accidents. The rain has slowed the pace, and this could wind up as the slowest first lap, by the way, in the 11-year history of the Nassau Trophy race. Take a look at that water. Hap Sharp at number 66, still out in front. Pedro Rodriguez in the number 10 Ferrari has now moved into second place. Past Kip Hudson was in the Cooper Chevy, number 94. Bob Johnson, number 92, and a Cobra is fourth. The pit straight. It's the end of the first lap. The leader, Hap Sharp in the Chaparral. Second, Pedro Rodriguez at Ferrari, number 10, down Simonette Strait, heading for the British Colonial Loop. 
Rodriguez of Mexico City, a great driver in a Ferrari sports car, with a good chance to win this race if the rain keeps up. Rodriguez is just a few seconds behind Sharp, and he is challenging. Well, it is raining. The lap times are slow, but the leaders, nevertheless, as you can see as they come around the corner, are beginning to lap the slower drivers. Rodriguez is narrowing the gap. As we said, Ferraris are more steady in the rain, and that, by the way, automatic transmission on the Chaparral could be a disadvantage because it increases the wheel spin. And in this race, many of the favorites are still back in the pack. We haven't seen Roger Penske, and he was the one who made a good start. In spite of the power, Cobras are doing all right. A.J. Ford and Hussein is having problems with his powerful Dodge engine car. Hussein is the most powerful car in the race, but it's got a lot of wheel spin. When Ford applies that power, and with the slippery track, it's not good. Penske now through the pilot house corner. He's pursued by Bruce McLaren and his old. Bruce's car number five is new, but apparently going well. Dan Gurney in a Ford-powered Lotus 19. He got a bad start, but he's moving up. There's the first wreck. It is number 64, Hugh Dibley, in a Brabham BT8 Climax, and he's out. The rain is beginning to take its toll. There's Roger Penske off the road. He apparently is out of the race. There goes half sharp five, and look at Penske, put his thumbs up, asking him to go on. Rodriguez is pressing sharp, though. Travieso. The early favorite, Roger Penske, out of the race very early. Roger, what happened? Well, it was real slippery out there, and I came around one of the corners and hit one of the small uh, corner markers, and it broke the front suspension, so it put, my, put me out of the race. Okay, John, but here's a development. Look at this. Number one, A.J. Ford is coming into the pits again. There's one of the world's great race drivers, and he's looking at his carburetors. The chief mechanic is uh, John Culp. This will hurt in his efforts to win this race. All drivers must make one pit stop. There's John Meekum, but uh, A.J. did not mean to make this pit stop. Okay, you're doing good, though. You're picking up three and four seconds. Sharp is making some kind of signs at the pits, and it may be that he'll be asking Roger Penske to take over for him since the rain is letting up. Here comes Dan Gurney. Half Sharp, he's into the pits, and here comes your driver James. Remember, it has stopped raining now, and Penske can drive very well on a dry course. Sharp, who drives very well in the rain, has given up his car to it. Hap Sharp, and of course he's a member of the team along with Penske, and he along with owner Jim Hall wants very much to win this race. 